Hi, I'm Justin, here with the all-new lightweight Cube Series camper. Today, we're going to show you how to load, unload, and operate the basic systems of the camper. Before backing underneath the camper, the Cube Series comes with a removable charge cable. You want to make sure to plug that in first. You'll find this plug on the driver's side of the camper. The sole purpose of this cable is to charge the camper from the truck. When backing up to load the camper, it is important to ensure you're centered with the camper. It's a good practice to leave three to four inches between the bottom of the camper and the truck bed for different loading and unloading conditions. Now we're going to lower the camper onto the truck. You'll find the controls behind this panel to the left of the stairs. On the left, you'll find your switch for raising and lowering the roof. In the middle here is your activation button for your jacks. And on the inner wall in here is your main battery disconnect. You want to ensure that that's on. And then you can turn your power switch on for your jacks. Now we can use the remote. The yellow buttons in the center are for lowering and lifting all four jacks at once, or each jack can be moved individually. Now that we have the camper fully loaded onto the truck, we can attach our tie downs. In order to tie the camper down to the pickup, the Cube Series is equipped with four ratchet straps, one in each corner. These conveniently attach to your factory tie downs in each corner of the truck bed. You then get it tight, come around the outside and pull the slack out, and now you're ready to ratchet. And here's a pro tip for all this access ratchet strap here. If you just roll it up, try to be fairly neat with it, tuck it right in back here and close your ratchet. This will be the same on all four corners. Now that we have the camper tied down on the pickup, we can plug in the power cord going from the camper. On some trucks, this plug will be located in the corner of the bed, but on this particular truck, it's located at the bumper. Little pro tip here for this excess cord. Take it, ball it up, and we can put it right back in here. So you want to stop the jack with about an inch of galvanized shaft still showing. That way you don't bottom out the gears. This is what happens when it bottoms out. There's no need to do that, it's just putting extra wear on your jacks. You can leave your jacks vertical or you can mount them horizontal to get them up and out of the way. Follow the same procedure for all four jacks. If your camper has a manual jacks, it'll come with a hand crank and an electric drill attachment. This is the manual crank. When using the drill attachment, just be cautious that when you're raising the jacks, you leave the one inch of bar showing. When using the manual jacks, after the weights touch the ground, you only want to do about five revolutions per jack per corner that way you avoid putting the camper in a bind. Now we're ready to open up the camper. First we want to start by unhooking each corner tie down.
The control panel for raising and lowering the roof is this silver panel located on the left hand side. To raise it, press up. To lower it, press down. Next, we're going to put the steps out. Compress the stairs a little to release the cable on the back side. Once it's off the screw, now you just pull out. Now we're ready to put up the other two walls. First, come inside, open the door, and make sure to flip this piece over. The next biggest important thing to make sure that your two arrows are lining up. If the arrows do not line up, adjust the appropriate jack up or down to get the arrows in alignment before raising the front and rear wall. Once your two arrows are lined up, bring this wall up, being sure to release the cable on the inside top of the wall. Press on each corner of the walls to ensure the latches engage. Same thing goes for the other wall. All three arms are telescoping. They are labeled on each one which way to tighten and loosen. When attaching the poles to the camper, Make sure that the poles are loose and telescoping. After it's connected, then you can tighten it up. The first step to setting up the handrail is to telescope the vertical leg that has the plastic screw on the bottom, extend it all the way, and tighten it. Next, we want to insert that vertical pole into the hole mounted onto the steps. Next, Make sure that you loosen this pole to extend it, remove the pin, and attach to the camper. Then we'll take our third arm, make sure to loosen it and extend it, remove the pin, and also attach this to the camper. Align all the, the vertical posts along with the others and tight, tighten the telescoping rods. To use the toilet, lift the bifold cover and attach to the Velcro on the counter. Now release the sliding latch on the interior of the cabinet. Sit down and get comfy. Make, make sure you get a, a copy of RVers Monthly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. When setting up the bed, move the cushions out of the way. Lift the front of the table to stow the table leg. With the table at a, about a 60 degree angle, remove it from the wall. Turn the table around so that the round cut out piece of the table is facing the forward wall of the camper. Rest the table on the lips between the two dinette seats.
Now use the cushions to fill in the table to create the bed. When closing up the camper before lowering the walls, there's a few things you need to check. Make sure the roof vent is closed. Make sure the vertical seat backs are laid flat. Make sure your sink and stove top cover are laid flat. When stowing the TV, make sure it's in the vertical position with the bungees attached to the wall. Make sure all items are off the counters. Don't forget to turn the lights off. All lights are touch activated and dimmable. And remove the handrail. Before lowering the front and rear wall, release the flush bolt from the upper and lower door. Be sure the cable is on the cable hook so the latches will clear the windows.